Hey, comic book collectors, do you want to protect what you collect? Do you hate when your comic books slide around in your short box or you need to turn them sideways just so they don't bend or fall over? Well, look no further than Sidekick Supplies. Their product fits firmly inside your comic box so you don't need to worry. And not only is their product made in the USA, but also ships free directly to your doorstop. Check out our sponsor, Sidekick Supplies at SidekickSupplies.com and use the code COMICOM15 for 15% off your purchase. Believe me, you'll be ordering more than one. Welcome to the one and only Comic-Con podcast, your podcast for comic book news, reviews, and comic community drama with your hosts, Nemesis Prime and Milton the Man. Are you listening? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Comic-Con podcast, season four, episode 11. It's your boy, Just Incredible. That's right. <laughs> uh <laughs> I was, uh, if you saw my Instagram post, I was at the bar and the bartender put my name as just incredible. Um, that, that actually goes back a very long way if you're a wrestling fan. And I know, uh, I got myself a wrestling fan here on, so he, a lot of people commented on it. So, uh, we got our buddy, Greg paperweight collects what's going on, man. How are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. So Zach's not with us. Um, he had some family stuff. He's in travels. Yeah. So um, just myself and Greg, you know, uh, obviously I could have done this show by myself, but I always like bringing people on and Greg was a great guest the first time around. So we had to ask him again. So Appreciate we're going to get right into uh, this episode. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Of course, what are we currently reading? We got some X-Men news that have been dropping this week and also some Marvel cinematic stuff. So we're going to get right into uh, current reads. Our guest, you know him on his weekly Instagram with his daughter doing the current pickups and stuff so um greg let's get right into it i know you had a little bit more time here on the podcast to kind of talk about what you're reading you know compared yeah. to your instagram stuff so let's get into um uh, whether it's stuff that you picked up this week or last week what's some stuff that you're enjoying that you're reading so what i what i binge read the entire week before new comic book day was uh, detective comics from 1062 to 1082 to catch up mm -hmm. so i binge that absolutely love it um i was so turned off by that three issue thing that chip did with joker that i'm like i need to jump back into detective <laughs> like my buddy jordan he's like dude trust me you gotta read detectives and, and i enjoyed it when i started it and i just mm -hmm. fell out so I, I got back into it and reading it in like a binge way is it, it's very are you reading that book by any chance detective i haven't read detective since tinny and dropped off it's been a while like i tried to stick with it but i just couldn't i just didn't like the way the direction they were going it's so it's been a while. I think I dropped off because I was collecting everything. I had a good, like, good run of detective all the way up. I think till like ten twenty seven was probably when I stopped collecting. I was just like, I can't do Batman cover A B C D and detective A and B. Like, I just was like, I can't do both. I hear you. I hear you. Um, well, I, for this week, I read um, Avengers Twilight Four, the One Hand Issue Two, and Fish Flies Issue Five. Okay. Um, let's, let's talk about Avengers because uh, Avengers is definitely on my docket to talk about. So what do you think of Avengers Twilight? You know, without giving spoilers, without spoiling too much. Yeah. Thought, um, like, what do you, where are you, where are you at with this series? The first two issues I absolutely loved and I was raving about it. It was almost like when Chip started the fail safe arc with Batman. Mm -hmm. and, and I've discovered as I'm reading more and more, I'm very much like a grounded type of reader in the sense of like street level crime, thugs, like settling things as opposed to this supernatural superpower type of thing that's why i was never really big into that and i loved indie stuff so issues one and two was incredible issue three i hated because it just seemed like rush and it was like out of nowhere like mm -hmm. you know like you know you know what happened at the end it was just like boom like all this shit is happening yep issue four picked up i wasn't loving it and then as it went on and ended i'm like oh this this was dope but four picked up right yeah and when i was talking to bc he was saying it might just be because it's such a short series where if it was maybe eight to 10 issues, it would have been a little better. Three just felt like, let's get it all out there now. We've set it up, let's put it all in there and then let's kind of finish things off in the next couple of issues. Well, I think it's, I thought it was going like 10 to 12 issues. I thought it was six. Oh, really? Oh. I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but. Um, I, we're gonna check this. I thought it was gonna be like at least a 12 issue. Um, <laughs> Okay, then what the hell's the excuse for that issue three, man? <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah. Oh no, it is only six. Wow. Dude. All right. All right. I thought it was going to be like a longer. So, all right. Well, then should be. you know, they, be. yeah, it definitely, it definitely could be expanded. I agree on it. You know, you get a little bit of the background of what happened with H Day. Yeah. Right. Not too much, but 
obviously some characters kind of come in there. You get the villain reveal and what has happened. It's perfect. It's a perfect Avengers level threat, right? Um, compared to what was happening in those first two issues, it sets it up. He, the person sets up exactly what he's been doing all this time. So yeah, it, it's going to be, it's shaping itself up to be a great limited series. Yeah. Um, and that's like my jam, man. Like that, like the whole, the first two issues, that's my jam, you know, like that's the stuff I like to read. Um, you know, when you kind of tie in very much the real world events in comics, mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah. Yeah, we've been talking about it, the whole political side and obviously what they're doing and behind the scenes and now what is basically basically what's said in issue four, all the things that has been going on for this entire time. So, yeah, and, and not in a bad way either, not like mm -hmm. in an extreme way or picking a side. It's just like this is hap like this is happening on, on, on a scale. You know what I'm saying? Whether people want to accept it or not right so it's very very cool to see it play out and you know play out kind of in a nice way where you don't have people i guess like bickering too much that I, when i started reading i found comics did that it was like the last place for kind of really free speech and mm -hmm. within like some of the stuff that they say in, in in the books and it's 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 it feels like that aside from comedy comics seems like one of the last real places where you can kind of say whatever and not i'm sure people get called out but you know what i'm saying Oh yeah, there's there's that love hate relationship because they do have the writers kind of put their own their you know their twist on it. They put themselves in the you know in the comic sometimes, and you know some people like it, some people don't. Sometimes you need to see what's going on in the world, and it needs to be put into comics. I think you know Zach and I obviously we've been talking about it every issue with Avengers Twilight, so it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, what else you got on the docket that you're reading? Well, I really also enjoyed? read that I really enjoyed uh, was the One Hand. Issue two. I don't know if you started reading that. The Rom V and Dan Waters uh, books. Uh, what's it on? Image Boom. What we got? Image. It's Image. Okay. No, no, oh. I definitely have not. What's the name of it again? I'll write it down. The One Hand and the Six okay. Fingers. So this is why you should really. Oh, that's it. right. You were talking about this the last time, and then. Yep. Okay. So, so issue one of the One Hand is basically from the perspective of the detective who apparently, you know, air quote solved this case before, mm -hmm. and then it kind of ends with, wait a minute, <laughs> so, here we go again, and then. Dan Waters' six fingers is from the perspective of the killer. So they're, they're like, they're, there's like synchronicity, even though they're completely separate. And it's so dope how they're doing it. And I'm a big round V fan. I don't, I don't think I've read a lot of Dan Waters. I think it's Dan Waters. Um, and I was like kind of having reservations. Like, is he going to be able to keep up and do, dude, I think the six fingers might have been better than the one hand. Hmm. And, but issue two. How many issues was that? Six That's fingers has only been one so far, and one hand has been two. Oh, okay, so it's all right. And it's really cool. It's kind of innovating in a sense, unless it's been done before, like having two completely separate titles, but with the same story. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, we're gonna. I'll talk about a title when, when I go. That's pretty much similar to that that okay. concept. So, um, then, anything else? Then probably my read of the week. I'm a sucker for this book. Is uh, Fish Flies, Jeff Lemire. A lot of depth and nuance to it. Like you know, people you either like Jeff Lemire, or you don't in terms of, like art and. and writing but it, it works for me and um it's just a good story like i like simple stories that are paced well and are telling and it's deep like it's very deep you know and uh that's the stuff that i enjoy reading yeah i i picked up the free comic book day on that and then i never picked up the series just because there's just so much you know, for sure coming for out sure. so it, but each issue that's come out it's i think it's yeah. made more like read of the week each time okay all so right it's, it's a cool read but that, that's all i've read because i've Friggin binge 20 issues of detective and then, <laughs> oh. and then these four and i tried this to read was that. A... i tried sorry i tried to read that one was it napalm lullaby or whatever i tried yeah from bengal yeah do it for me all right it's it's on my list i i haven't read it uh bengal you know i, I like his art uh, a yeah, lot he and he did say like this is like a 10-year project he's been oh, really wow. working on it for the past two years it's it was the only book this week that i didn't read because okay. this week was huge yeah. marvel dc indie stuff this week I just everything, all the nostalgic stuff, all the Star Wars stuff. There was so much X Men stuff, um, the Batman stuff. I believe me, I had so many titles that I even want to talk about tonight that I'm just not gonna. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let's let's get right into you know my stuff. So, you know, again, you talked about the sing, you know, synchronicity, um, like a like a parallel. I'm gonna yeah. save that book for the end because that's definitely my pick of the week. But, um, you asked this question. I think it was last week or the week before about like sleeper hits or something that people yeah. aren't reading. And you know what I picked up and I talked about it a couple months ago when issue three came out was Outsiders from DC Comics. I've heard um, it's good. 
I heard it's good. Yeah, you know what it is? Outsiders is always a title that's outside of the norm, right? They they typically bring different characters into like a group. So the Outsiders has always been a different group. I enjoyed the last one, which was Batman and the Outsiders. Okay. Um, it had like Katana in it, Batman, Black Lightning, and like a couple of, and like two other characters. It was a good series. So this one has the main characters are Batwoman and Luke Fox is Batwing. Then you get an introduction literally in the first issue of a new character. Her name's Drummer. She has yeah. like these powers to communicate with like history. So she's like considered the like the greatest archaeologist. Yeah. Um, and she uses, you know, she uses it throughout these issues, these first five issues. So whatever that means. I don't know. Okay. Uh, issue two was great. They had a run in with like the challengers of the unknown. And like those are characters from like way, way back in the day and like the Silver Age DC stuff. Uh, issue three wraps in with something that we talked about about a month or two ago with the whole bat verse okay. where they kind of like, Hey, if they've already done a spider verse in issue three, they bring in all these like bat verse characters and it's like all different Batmans from across Ooh. the multiverse in issue four. They introduced this new character. Her name's um, Jenny, Jenny Kreese. But by the end of the issue, she goes by Jenny crisis and she's someone who's like really awesome. So her ability is, she has the ability to project her emotions, whether good or bad, to people out in the world. So it's like, you know, if she's having like a rough day, she'll just she'll be upset and the Kick stock and market the changes. Huh? Kick and scream on the ground. When yeah, like man. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Like she um, in the throughout the history or origin, you hear about her. She's like, oh, she had a boyfriend or a girlfriend and. You know, the next day the person dumped her and again, like the stock market changed or in this issue, she's running from the outsiders. And then all of a sudden all these cats come around because she she like puts her emotions to all these cats. And it's really it was an interesting read. And then the latest issue that just came out this week was issue five, which brought back an old uh, Batwoman villain called Nocturna. Yes, and she and she throws like this party with all these villains like. Clayface is there, Professor Pig, Mr. Bloom, the Upside Down Man, like all these like horror and supernatural villains, like C and D level characters. But like the party that she throws is almost like an orgy of villains, like secret society, but with horror. Pretty so like cool. they have all the villains have like their, I guess you were, it's literally like a dominatrix thing where like they're the ones that are dominating these people, but in horror ways, like Professor Pig's like cutting the people, Upside Down Man has his horror thing mr bloom it's wild That's like it's cool. a really wild issue yeah. so uh definitely i think a series that is underrated that people aren't really talking about because again yeah, you yeah. get literally we're in the first five issues you have two first appearances and that first appearance with this jenny crisis is someone that they could use and in reading it i i w went back and I, I went on like line and i typed in her name just to get a little background and there was an article literally a couple weeks ago talking about how she's literally the polar opposite of superman but in a bad way because you know you look at superman and he's so strong right. that he could do anything and this girl has basically the opposite of powers but she is also so strong that she could manipulate people in the outside world huh. so i definitely think it's a title to be picking up I definitely say give it a shot. I'll read it. I read your last one of your newer comic book day series that you recommended. I read it. Um, so I'll definitely check this out based on your recommendation. Yeah. I de you know, all five issues, easy to pick up, easy to find, you know, even if you want to wait, maybe another issue, get the trade, whatever. But uh, it's definitely a cool series that I, after reading that issue three with the whole bat burst thing, I really wanted to pick it up. And then I ended up picking up the first three and then I m didn't read them. And then I grabbed four and five this week. So I ended up just, same thing like you did. You binged uh, Detective. I literally binged The Outsiders 1 to 5. So 20 issues um, heavy. other titles this week, obviously Transformers 6 gives you the nostalgic. You get um, Optimus Prime fighting Devastator. You get Cliff Jumper ver fighting Starscream. And then there's pretty much the movie scene. I mean, if you know, you know, the Transformers animated movie, you pretty much know what I'm talking about. You got Optimus on the medical board. You know, he can't die, but they basically do almost kind of like the same thing you know the one of the transformers is like oh you can't die and he's like basically ready to give up the matrix okay. um some really stuff ha some really stuff some really cool stuff happens in that issue as well i really thought one of the decepticons might change sides at the end but you know we'll, we'll see how that goes i've heard nothing but good things about that series i'm not reading it like i have bought in a couple but 
it just feels like overwhelming to like the void rise bowls transfer like, just to kind of like i'm trying to just still ca- like i'm trying to read old stuff to catch up and new it's it's a lot mm. but i think one day i will i actually bought them more for like my son to have even though it's not the original it's it's, it's a dope cover the feel of it's very cool um so i mean it's his so yeah it's gonna be interesting because the next issue issue seven has kind of like a changing of the guards let's just say because so dan warren johnson's been writing it and doing the mm-hmm. art uh, the next one has like George Corona is kind of coming in because Daniel's kind of going out after this, yeah, after this issue seven. So how do you feel about that? Um, uh, you know what? He's if he's told his story, then that's it, right? You know, let, let the next arc happen. We've been seeing hints and of like Megatron. You know, you you want to change things sometimes. I know we we always talk about if a writer artist can kind of stay on a book for a while and really tell out a long story, that's perfect. But I guess he's trying to do other things, right? I know he's yeah. got that extremity that he has. So who knows where he'll end up and realistically, like what's the next story arc? Obviously I would think it's going to be bringing in Megatron at some point. Cause there is a free comic book day called the energy on universe one shot, yeah. which I think is going to be bringing in more of the, like a tie-in like with void rivals, GI Joe stuff and transformers. So that's kind of the next the next thing that i'm I not think a fan is. of the changes even like the art like sometimes i can't tell like is this person no longer white or are they and I, i'm not talking about race swapping like the ink like i can't tell if is is this talia ghoul or is this selena kyle like you've switched the artist and i can't tell right now like I, I i don't love the artist changes when it's very drastic that is my biggest complaint of reading comic books it's a hundred percent especially on certain titles where if you don't know the character like you just said it they if the artist changes and you're just like who is this that i'm talking to you know who's this character that they're talking to and if you as the reader don't get that that's kind of bad yeah because it's like i now have to think of like you know going forward like all right well now i guess this is the version i have to see you know like superheroes are easy because they're costumes right yeah. but if they're just like the joe schmoes of the world like okay it's a little different like, yep. i don't know you know, like you said like talia doesn't really have like a get up um it could just be like a or like a random police officer or whoever, and especially more so in non superhero titles. Like when yeah. that changes, it's really tough to like. All right, well, who is this? <laughs> yeah. Um, another book that I like the first issue, and again, I think it's it's a solid series. Is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers: The Return? I heard good uh, things. Yeah, this is really good. Like you have Amy Jo Johnson, obviously the Pink Ranger. She's the writer on this. In this issue, you get to see the the background of what happened, how the Rangers defeated Lord Zed and also um, Rita. You kind of see some stuff that and who they've lost in that time frame. Uh, you actually get to see something that you would never see in the comics, never seen the cartoons happen. So I think it's really awesome. And it also sets up the villain kind of for the series that's going to happen. So really liking that. But pick of the week. And again, this goes back to you about the parallels of, um, you know, uh, one hand and six fingers so carnage number five okay oh if we last week zach and i talked about venom 31 and yeah. how great torin gunrick has been writing both uh the, the current carnage series and she also just picked up on the venom stuff so last issue last week we talked about how cletus kind of wants dylan uh you know re- well realistically he wants eddie but basically going around it trying to get dylan to find his father so they can basically fight in this issue, it's basically on the reverse. So again, Torrin's writing it, different artists, but for Carnage number five. So everything that you read or saw in Venom 31 is happening at the same time that Carnage number five is happening, but more on Cletus's side. Because in wow. Venom number 31, a lot of the story is the main character is Dylan, and then the supporting character is Carnage. In this, it, the roles are reversed. So you see what Carnage is doing in the four you know more in the foreground and what dylan is doing in the background okay and it's just like such a great thing like really so great. when you read if, if you read them you're like oh damn like you actually get to see what was cletus doing how he was setting up some of his murders trying to get to dylan uh and then, then in venom you get the reverse like what dylan is doing more so like trying to get a job this and that but what cletus is doing in the background which you don't know and it was just such a great issue this week that you really need to be re- reading this current little story arc that she's doing both for before uh, the Venom War comes out this summer. So definitely pick of the week has to be Carnage number five. Okay. 
Yeah. So like I, like I told you, I read mostly a lot of indie, some DC, and the only Marvel stuff I'm reading is Twilight and Ultimate Spider-Man. But mm -hmm. I will say, listening to your guys' last episode, for sure, I heard you talk about this. But I was hoping Zach was going to be on because I need to, not to quickly change gears, but I wanted to thank God for you guys because he said something that has actually been kind of hurting my love of, of reading comics and kind of being involved. And I'm so sick of everybody loving everything. It's not possible. Yes. So thank you guys for pointing that out. And if you do love everything, that's a problem, I think. Because mm -hmm. like, where's your, where's your, what's your scale? What's your gauge? Like, how is everything great? It's okay to not like something and then just move on. I love DC. Chip's Joker one almost made me get out of Batman completely. I thought it was garbage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you got to be able to call these things out because I, I just, I don't get that. It's not what a, whether it's Marvel, DC, Indies. Like you don't have to like everything. It's okay to say this was trash. Move on. Yeah, you know, and I, you, I'm glad you. I'm serious. I again, this is not scripted. I'm so glad you brought that up because I. All I'm thinking I was, about today. I, I was thinking about it this week too, and it it's more so on you know influencers, not just the comic book people, but people that are that deal with like going to see movies that they go get to see premieres and mm -hmm. video. You so know, awesome. you get like early videos. You never hear anything bad. And what happens is the reason why you're never going to hear anything bad from like, let's just say it's you and you get to go see all these movies early and you get all this early access. If you ever say anything bad, you're never going to be invited. Again. No, I know. I've heard. So that's basically that. what it is. Yeah, I know. Everybody wants to everybody wants to say something good about everything because they want to be that person to be like Marvel's like, oh, they're going to I'm going to Greg really likes this. Greg really likes this from Marvel. Oh, you know, we should start giving them early early comps and sending him books and then he can talk about it and promote us yeah. but everything yeah, no. is not great no. every movie is not great no. like that's the idea and i can't i hate some of these influencers that are on instagram and they do these reels and they love everything and they're so happy about everything everything is not yeah. like it's not that constructive so. criticism is important and if we truly yes. love these books we want them to be called out so they improve if you keep saying this pile of shit is a pile of shit, but now there's a bow on the pile of shit. Guess what? Still a pile of shit, just with a bow. Like it yeah. don't like it's a like just and again, you don't gotta beat it down. You don't gotta be like f this person, this person mm -hmm. agenda. No, like the Ultimate X Men uh, from trusted people that I heard talk about, including you guys. I was told this book is trash, and guess what? It probably is. And we just move on. We're not saying worst thing ever. Go die. We're saying this is bad. Improve. Yeah. Move on. No, I, Zach and I, we watched some reel of somebody literally before we recorded last week. And that's why Zach kind of brought it up. And the guy was just like, this is such a great comic Peach Momoko's art and writing. And it was just like, I don't know, man. I didn't read it, but I yeah. trust you guys. I trust again, you again, to each his own. Again, yeah. But at the same time, you can't be out there and thinking that everything that you, someone that you follow, everything that they say is like gospel and it's great. There's no way that's hot. That's there's no way. So. That turns me away from actually grabbing more books now because I'm seeing it. Like, you know who's actually, sorry, you know who's actually does very good reviews that I find who's very, does it well and very objective and just like, Us? Rock and Robbie. <laughs> no, you guys have talked about Rock and Robbie Billups. Okay. Pop culture philosophers. Every He's done it most consistently. Every single Tuesday night between like 10 and 11 p.m., he, he reads a plethora of books and he gives his review and he has people on the show, writers, artists, and he says, this book's good. This book is shit. Like he, flat out, right? And that's great. Yes, you guys are great as well. But I'm saying outside of you know, <laughs> my, my circle of friends, like I don't know Robbie, but his yeah. reviews are so honest. And it's just, that's why I go to him. He's like mm -hmm. my go-to every Tuesday night if I'm going to grab a book or not. Yeah. See, that's the guy, That's what it is. You just you got to be open. You got to be honest. There's, It is what it is. So. Yeah. All right, let's move out of the uh, the comic book talk. Let's kind of get into some articles tonight. So uh, this kind of just dropped today. We got some movie talk. We're going to be talking about a interesting thing that just kind of popped over at the uh, CBR.com. So according to Daniel RPK, uh, Eternals 2, Ant-Man 4, and Captain Marvel 3 get disappointing updates. So insider Daniel Rack share some disappointing news about the upcoming sequels to Eternals, Ant-Man, and the Wasp, Quantumania, and the Marvels. So according is to the post, it, is it disappointing? Is it? <laughs> well, let me, it depends on how you take it. Again, I enjoyed Eternals. I did not like Ant-Man. I enjoyed the Marvels, both of them. 
So I'd like more. But with that being said, Marvel Studios will be taking fewer risks in the future and focusing more on guaranteed hits. This means that the Eternals 2, which was reportedly secretly being worked on at Marvel, is now on hold as Disney's CEO by Bob Iger believes it has been destined to flop. Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige, however, said he would love to see the sequel get made. Ant-Man 4 and Captain Marvel 3 are also not expected to happen following the box office performances of their respective predecessors. So, uh, Greg, you know, you know, again, you just said it. You know, what are you thinking? You kind of you saw the movies, you know, you're kind of newer in this. How's how, so what are your thoughts? Front, like always, I did not watch the Eternals because it was one of the first movies everybody said you could skip this movie. So I have no comment on it, but, but I'll, I'll talk about the others. OK, so the other thing that we have to consider is now there is going to be kind of this power struggle. And, and it could be that this is BS and they're still going to make it. But as Fe Feige and Iger are not on the same page, it's it's going to probably hurt the projects ultimately. Now, I actually enjoyed the first two Ant-Mans personally. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think they were the greatest, but I liked them. Third one I thought was not good. Fun, visually fun to go to a theater and see Star Wars on steroids in a sense. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> right. In, in, in the Marvel, I didn't see the newer one. The first one I saw and I just, I mean, what is going on here? Just didn't do it for me. Right. So with that being said, if you need to sacrifice some movies that did not maybe hit some sort of financial benchmark, that's okay. Because then maybe as you improve in other ways, then you can kind of revisit this. I, I, I personally think Marvel should really start utilizing, like they said they were, the special presentation. Because you don't have to put all your resources into it. You can do it like you do with Werewolf by Night. If it's a hit, maybe we dump a little bit more money in here. If it's trash, let's just keep moving. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they should utilize that because it's probably a smaller budget, smaller group of people. And even though I didn't, I didn't love it, I didn't hate Werewolf by Night, it was universally accepted, it seemed like, right? So yep. you could do more based off of that. So I, I, don't, I don't mind this. And I think you're seeing that with tons of companies just cutting back. It's just how things are going. And if it means we get better movies, these are on the chopping block. It's just like when athletes get traded or, you know, wrestlers get fired. If they're not producing, we got to try something new. Yeah, people don't like them. I, and you know, and it is like Eternals was, they they said, Eternals was like an experimental project. Shang-Chi was an experimental project. I think both of those movies were done extremely well. I think, again, even though, yes, Eternals, you don't really need to see. You could skip as far as the phases. But it still is a good movie. It's characters that people don't, you know, realize that are actually, you know, in the Marvel, Marvel comics, Marvel, you know, cinematic universe because they don't interact with anybody. But overall, it was a good movie. Me personally, I liked Captain Marvel, the first one. I get, you know, the whole idea with her not knowing who she is for the, the majority of the movie is probably what the downside is. People don't like the way Brie looks just because she looks like she has. She dig her own grave. Time. Her own grave, man. Yeah, but. She definitely changed, I feel like, in the Marvels. You know what was interesting is I saw the Marvels in movie theaters and I really enjoyed it. If you know, I was uh, you know, if I was a female high school girl, young girl, I think it would be a great movie for that. Then I saw it uh again on the way home from Megacon on the flight, and I really thought that they cut out scenes and it skipped <laughs> so much like the beginning fight, like the first like 20 minutes is so fast, and you're like is there a director's cut for this? Because I feel like there's some stuff that got taken out that probably should have been, even if it's like 10 minutes more really would have made the movie better in the beginning, setting up the villain, kind of setting up a lot of the plot and giving the characters a little bit more because it just moves so fast from like the different fight scenes, which again, choreography was amazing in that movie Never without a doubt, you know, them fighting three different people moving around. I still think that movie's great again, but it, like, you said Ant-Man, definitely not the best of the three. It's kind of what happens almost. We feel you know, some of these movies, especially in the MCU, first two movies are good. And then by the third one, you're just like, Ugh. it was fun. It, and it felt like I'm not comparing it to Deadpool, but it just didn't feel like it kind of fit the timeline. It just kind of felt like its own kind of movie. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Like even that, that Hispanic actor, like, how is he not in part three? That funny dude with the, like, how yeah, do you yeah, not have that right. guy back? Like, I actually enjoyed it, and I and I do like Paul Rudd. I am very much anti skinny superheroes, but mm -hmm. I enjoy Paul Rudd, and it's fine because he is an ant. But um, yeah, I mean the third one just didn't do it for me. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. You know, we have Captain America number four. That's kind of definitely on the docket. Obviously, you know, we got the Fantastic Four that was announced. That's kind of their their big push. I, you know what? I don't think we're gonna get the X Men until after Secret Wars. 
I think that's going to be like the relaunch of everything. And then that's how they're going to bring in like the X-Men because I feel like it, that's a guaranteed thing, right? The X-Men are almost is almost going to be a guaranteed hit. These you other know, titles Deadpool is going to kind of give us in that direction, or is that just kind of standalone? I feel like that could be a standalone, but maybe so. if maybe, you know, the way it was probably supposed to be done. And then after seeing like the dismal, you know, returns on some of these movies, they may they they stepped in and, and told Ryan Reynolds or asked Ryan Reynolds, like, hey, listen, let's do this and let's kind of change it up, obviously, you know, with what's going on in the MCU. Uh, you know, we've seen Loki season two. Kang is out. There's also obviously there's also reports that the Avengers Kang Dynasty movie is going to be changed. The title is going to be completely different. There's no word on that. And then there's a lot of other characters that are out there in the ether that we have no idea what they're doing. Right. Um, Marvel, the end of the Marvels kind of sets up young Avengers, which I still want to see. I, you know, I like Kate Bishop. It's a series that I continuously go back to. Hawkeye was great. Yeah, Ms. Marvel, same thing. Yep. I can go back to that. I like Amon Vellani. She's <coughs> absolutely the best thing since uh, post uh, Robert Downey Jr., without a doubt. Whoa, so big. Those are big shoes, sir. Hey, listen, she loves the character and plays the character very well. You know, is it the best written? Is it the best visually? But I think she loves it so much that you really engulf that character. No, I didn't mind it. I watched it with my daughter. Like, I didn't love it. It's, it's not meant for me. It's meant for my Yeah, daughter. oh, that's what it is. Yeah, it's not It's not meant, you know, for, for guys like us. But I still think character-wise, she's yeah. the best thing to happen for them. You know, there's. I think there's better characters in my opinion. But I think as far as post, post-snap, until we get the next Spider-Man, I think that's real. you know, that's what really what we're working with right now. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, so let's kind of get out of that talk and we're going to kind of stick with some TV stuff. So I'm sure people have already heard this is kind of coming over at the Hollywood Reporter. So Marvel shocker still sticking with the Marvel X-Men 97 creator uh, Bayo DeMeo fired weeks before the premiere. So in an unusual situation on the eve of the project's debut, which is coming out literally next week. We've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. Writer producer who worked on Moon Knight and Blade will no longer be promoting the show or moving forward with future seasons. So. Um, like I said, DeMeo, who previously worked on some of the Moon Knight stuff, he was in the early talks with the Blade stuff, already was talking about a third season of uh, the X-Men 97 is already gone. When We just had the premiere literally the yesterday, I think. Nowhere to be found. Uh, social media has been de deactivated. Uh, it's, this article is great, too. It goes into his silence on social media has been acute. As he was a prolific poster sharing X-Men tidbits, as well as a shirtless photos of himself at the gym. For a time, he also ran a non-explicit OnlyFans account, all of which inspired the LB LGBTQ publication out to declare him the sexy, a gay Marvel writer and showrunner to know. So in this day and age, you can still be black and gay and get fired from Disney Marvel. But I don't even know why that matters that he's black and gay. I don't think, well, you know, that's what it is because everybody kind of talks about it being protected. Like that's, he checks all the boxes for Disney. Here's, here's the bigger question. Okay. And I, and I talked to Thoreau about this. It's like, why just before are you trying to get in front of it? Are you like, well, the week before, like a bizarre timing, right? What, what is your take on the timing? More than anything, whether right or wrong, the timing, is, I find bizarre. I think there's something. And again, this is the same thing like with the Jonathan Majors. Like there's something must have happened. He must have said something. He must have posted something or they found something in emails and they didn't want it to get released and they didn't want it to get leaked. And they were just like, we're done with you. Like, we just can't have it. Okay. I mean, I, I wasn't, I mean, when I first heard about, you know, him making the show and kind of the, the headline as to what the show was going to be based on, it already turned me off not not for any other reason but like just maybe not for me just like miss marvel is not for me right um and i've never been into like x-men like i don't know enough about it right um but i mean I w it looked cool right the, like the animation like everything looked kind of cool when i saw the trailer but then i was hearing some things and at the end of the day to each their own no hate no whatever but that show was not on my list to watch period so I'm more curious as to the time. And that's an interesting point. Maybe they found something. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, but very bizarre. Very bizarre. And then to go ghost. 
Yeah. And I'm sure none of the, none of the people that were at the press release, the, you know, the, <clears throat> the invitation yesterday, I'm sure not one reporter no. asked the question, like no. not one person asked them, loud. Hey, uh, you know, what, what's going on? Not one. like, can you, just, and that's what it is. It's like, but those are the questions that they should be asking. Of course. Hey, why, why is he not here? Hey, why is he fired? But they don't want to ask that question because they don't, they're never going to be asked again. They're not going to be asked back. To That's like when new, reporters ask Marvel politicians thing. questions. They're not yeah. asking any real questions. Listen, you can ask them. Don't give them softball questions. Yeah. Ask the question and just and let them say, we can't talk about it right now. It'll come out. Or, you know, no comment. Because that was I, that's something that you heard so many times back in the day. No comment, no comment. Yeah. But the fact that nobody asked this has just been, it's a little rough. So... Or do you I don't think know. it's one of these reverse 4D chess where now there's so much anticipation on it that people are going to tune in? Or you think this no? Is you know what? I've been thinking about this too, especially the series, and I don't think that they again. This is X Men '97. The stories need to be written like it was 1997, right? And even so, like I don't really. I thought about this today as watching the clips. Like they've been, you know, dropping some clips, some extra trailers. I'm not sure even though why Bishop's there because Bishop was from the future and i mean i get he was in like the 90s comics and he was a big part of the x-men you know in like the uh the uncanny x-men era in the 90s but for x-men 92 i don't remember him really being there at the end of the series so like him being there is a little weird i'm just curious if you know the things that made the original x-men series great spider-man the animated series yeah. batman the animated, animated series, series was taking literally the stories directly from the comics and just putting it to animation. Yep. If they're gonna, if he, this guy is gonna put his agenda into these ten episodes, exactly. And in the next ten episodes that he wrote, and that they were like he said talking about another season, then it's not really for the people, and it's not really what was happening in 1997 for the X. Exactly. And that's what I'm scared of. And I'm just gonna watch it and be like, "Yep, that's that was inputted in there, and it's not really what of what is." I was reading in like the early nineties for the X-Men stuff. So do I need to watch the old X-Men stuff? Probably a little bit, but some people could probably just watch this. We know it picks, it literally picks up the day after the final episode of the series way back in the nineties, which is really cool. And, and That's you know, the only thing I really like. Sorry. And I'm not saying anything groundbreaking and this might not be correct, but you know, a lot of these characters being in these shows, we, we both know that everything comes down to merchandising. So somebody probably made Dan Bishop to all these toys and they're like, you guys better make sure he's in. He's going to Toys R Us. So, yeah. You know, so uh, I know a lot of people I like. There's so many comments that I saw on, you know, um, on Instagram, whether it's through or YouTube, like people were like, well, he got fired because he's he, uh, you know, chopped off uh, Rogue's ass yeah. and this and that. And I'm just that was the like, biggest disservice. <laughs> yeah. Like such a disservice to the character. But. <laughs> And again, I'm excited just to he rehear the voices that I remember from the 90s. You know, like this is like 20 years ago. It, it's wild to think about that. I, and I even saw a lot of these voice actors and actresses at Megacon down in Florida last month. Like, and people were getting their books signed by them. And that's really cool that they, and I, and I even watched this video of behind the scenes and they talk about it, how, you know, the people come up to them and it's such an inspirational thing. Like, what the voice actors have been through, you know, the past 20 years. And that's with everything, right? That's with every animated series, like all the stuff that Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill did for like Batman, the animated series. Yeah. Same thing with, you know, again, Spider-Man and even justice league and, you know, the justice league unlimited. There's like so much that these, the people that like, they love it and they, <laughs> they almost like worship those type of characters yeah. and those voice actors. So like when something changes, they're like, oh, they're up in arms. They're like, Oh my God, the original, let's just say Wolverine actor is not back for their voice. And just, you, know. You, you know, you know what I appreciated most, unless my eyes were deceiving me. I liked that in the trailer, Wolverine had a butt in his hand. He had, he had a, like, I thought they would cut all that kind of stuff out. Cause you know, now yeah, I did see that too. Yeah. I wonder if he'll have a beer too. Maybe you never know. Hopefully, so, you know, I thought that was cool. That was keep uh, it as is. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, something's going to come out at some point of like why he was fired. Um, but I get it. That's just the times we live in, like social media, social media. They they did talk about it in the article, too, that he did take down his Twitter like a year ago. Yeah. But his Instagram kind of like was he went just completely MIA. So who knows? Again, bizarre, man, bizarre timing. That That's all I'm saying. Bizarre timing. 
Yeah, it's very weird. And again, the fact that they, I guess, knew that he had a non-explicit OnlyFans account, I guess they were okay with that. I don't even know if, you know, again, they talk about it in the article, but who who knows, like, how much... Well, you don't think they knew ahead of time? I'm sure they knew, but maybe they would just, again, they waited to this opportune moment they were to to get rid of him. Maybe they wanted to wait for it was to be finished, you know, like, hey, your job, you know, like when you're going to get fired, when are you going to get fired? You're not going to get fun fired Monday at 9 a.m. You're going to get fired at like 430 on a Friday because you've done you, the you, work. You don't think week. like executives got to see the finished product and were like, he's got to go. Do you think that's a chance or it wouldn't happen a week before? It would be many weeks in advance. I would think it's once everything is done and it's literally ready to be uploaded to Disney Plus. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, we shall see. Yeah, the story so, goes. Um, speaking of X Men news, let's kind of kick it out to our last article for the evening. And <laughs> this one just dropped over today at SX, uh, SXXW X Men South by Southwest. South by, yeah, South by Southwest. Um, X Men press release just dropped. They are coming out with obviously the end of the Krakoa age and into the, the fall of the ashes. Um, so we have three upcoming titles coming out this uh, this summer uh we have the uh, uncanny x-men we have X- x-men and then uh, exceptional x-men all written by different people um the three new series that were announced like i said coming out we have uh you know gal simone doing some writing on there jed mckay and um, i guess that's al ewing is that that's not al ewing eve no, l ewing yeah completely someone so this is writers. yeah i don't remember so uh, different teams. We have like an X-Men Wolverine Nightcrawler team with Gambit. We got the Cyclops team and Magic. And then there is the um, I guess the, the final one would be um, Kitty Pride and, and Frost's team. So all different stuff. And it, Zach would, you know, love to be talking about this coming out from, from the ashes of, you know, what we're going to be getting. But, uh, you know, what are your thoughts? You know, again, you're not a big X-Men guy. I'm not a big X-Men guy. So even some of these characters, like, I'm like, I don't know, but you know what? Now that they're, they're out of this Krakoa age, there's always a good time to jump in, and this could yeah. be a nice little jumping on point for people. So. so I took this article as a few different things, right? One, just like you said, right? And perhaps it's a new way to kind of start like connecting new universes and characters. But the more intriguing thing to me was the, uh, is this the 2024 budget for them to kind of push more of that digital because it's, it's a VV, like these are going to be released through in, in a digital capacity and with NFTs. Yeah. So I don't they're know kind of starting if this, something. huh? Yeah, yeah like, they're kind of starting something as well. Yeah, I don't know if this is, this is like, let, this is our push. This is our first round draft pick. This is how we're going to push this again, because it looks like each year, yes, more and more people are reading digitally. Um, it goes up incrementally each year. And this just might be a new way to, introduce people to it it will it work i don't i don't know like nfts have not really been really you know that much in the uh in the realm of popularity these days but i i took it as kind of two different things a fresh start and perhaps they're not a negative agenda but they're a way to introduce a digital book to audiences yeah, it's going to be interesting. They did drop a trailer over on YouTube and Instagram and everything like that. And there's some there, there's a lot of information that came out. So the X Men uh, the X Mansion has been dismantled and turned into a prison with a secret inmate. Um, I don't know who that's going to be. The article goes into each series will offer different explorations <laughs> of the mutant mythos as they take Marvel's Merry Mutants into a band into a bold and unturned ter- uh, un burden territory over their 60 year history the x-men have been many outcasts outcast teachers revolutionaries heroes above all they're a species and the future is still theirs for the taking krakoa showed the world what homo superior is truly capable of and now the x-men have a fight harder than ever to keep x-men professor x's dream alive these three core series will approach the x-men's vital mission with distant and relevant prospectives through remaining faithful to the storytelling power of the mutant metaphor. So yeah, everything's coming out. You got July, August, and September. Uh, it's going to be something new, right? We had the whole, you know, house of X, fall of X, uh, powers of 10. You know, I kind of tried to get into that with the Hickman stuff and it was just way too much for me. Yeah. I hadn't been reading, you know, X-Men for so long, but I think with these writers and these artists, now is a good time to, you could jump on, 
you know, and there was always different times that I would jump in and out of the X-Men series, you know, like, right. I got back into X-Men right after they did Avengers vs. X-Men. The whole Phoenix force came in and it, the Phoenix force took over like five of the X-Men and they had to like, they, they battled it off. And then I was just like, all right, now I can jump in. There's different X-Men titles. Cause there was like extraordinary X-Men, X-Men and uncanny. That was a good time for me to get back into the X-Men titles. Now, same thing. Yeah. A lot of characters I don't know about. A lot of old characters I do. So we'll see what happens. I think this could be a great jumping on point. And so, and I know they just dropped also a variant this week uh, for this at the show, which as of the time of recording, I haven't seen any up on eBay, but I'm sure it's going to be like the hot book for the next week. It'll hit some, some top 10 list or some got on you know absurd amount and then it'll just come right back down because it's just literally the gatefold cover of the titles uh i don't know what's inside maybe some maybe nothing. you know yeah could be just like the black and whites of some of these titles it could just be designs of the characters but i'm excited to, you know to see it over the summer so at least we have something to look forward to for the x-men because yeah and it does seem when i did hear people kind of chime in about it like in chats and whatnot it seemed to be kind of people were more in favor of like a change. Like, okay, the run's been had fresh start, right? Even though sometimes that's the opposite, but it seems again, not knowing, it seems like this has ran its course and people are excited about a new start. So I think that's also carrying on the heels of this ultimate universe that everybody seems to love aside from X-Men, which might, you know, that one title, but nonetheless, this is separate. Um, We'll see, man. It, it's that was one of the things I wanted to ask you as well. Like, does it, it feels like 2024, the reads have improved right thus far. Do you find that? Yeah, I think it's it all depends on what you're trying to read. I think if you're, you know, if you're a reader of superhero stuff, it has its ups and downs, but there's been a lot of like internal stories that are very good. Like I said, I think the Wolverine series right now is amazing. Again, the, the Carnage series is amazing. Uh, Venom, if it kind of continues where it's at with Torn writing it, the DC stuff has been solid, obviously, with mostly it's, I would say, the Batman stuff. But a lot of people say Action Comics has done very Superman, well. I, Superman's I, good. No, I like Superman, too. I, I read the first, yeah. like, six issues, and then I kind of stopped. And it's I good. don't know why, but I liked it a lot. No, yeah, it was really good. good. The whole thing with, uh, you know, all with Lex in prison and all Oh, dude, it takes a wild turn, man. You should get back into it. And even talking to some old school readers, they've even said this is one of the better throughout all the years of Superman's existence, this mm -hmm. current run. So I'm enjoying it. I think they're about, what, 10 issues deep. I, I would definitely recommend getting back into Superman. Yeah, I definitely want to. I like it. Who was the, the one? They introduced some chick to like Midnight. Um, Graf, um, Marilyn Moon Knight. Yeah, her. Dude, there's yeah. taking a lot of twists, man. That, that's what I love. <laughs> like, it's taken some wild twists that. You kind of think it's going to come, but it doesn't. And then it does come. So they're doing a great job with that book. The art is dope. Like, you know, oh, I love, yeah, I love uh, Campbell's Campbell's art is amazing in there. Yeah. So that's it for this week's episode. Greg, thank you so much for popping on here this week. Like I said, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have Zach, no but worries. you know, things happen. We, we move, we move forward, right? Sure. You'll, I apologize you'll always try to bring me sick and sounding like crap, but I, I wasn't going to flake on you, bro. <laughs> no no it's all right like i said i would have done this thing by myself i would have sounded like an idiot talking to myself but there's at least some good stuff to talk about there's some great comic books this this week to talk about so uh you know where can people find you uh what do you have upcoming Let's so before know. i jumped on i was just told that i hit 1000 followers oh, so now congratulations. I a, a giveaway because i said at 1001 because you know everybody gets you at 1000 and then they drop out so i said Give yeah away. I need, I sold my collection. I need to figure something out now. <laughs> and uh, like, I kept my PC and some spec things. Like it's still fun to, to speculate, but um, a, a, like a large, like most of my slabs and my long boxes are gone. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, but it's exciting too, because I really just want to focus on building up the PC for the kids. So, I mean, just still Instagram. Once everything is paid up, I'll probably invest in some equipment um, there's no need really for shows. Like I enjoy doing shows because it's fun to meet people and like, I'm not a big seller. I'm foremost like a collector and reader first, but it's fun to sell because that's where you get awesome trades at like small cons. If there's like a book or a toy you're dying for. Like I've seen some really cool trades happen with some rare things. Right. So they're fun to do the shows. The tables are cheap, but, um, for now it's, it's nothing really just uh, Instagram, uh, some, like, not even selling on Instagram because there's nothing to sell at the moment. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's it's so it's funny. So again, congratulations! You hit one thousand. I forget where you were before when you first came on earlier in the year. Something. 
And uh, so we just hit 500 finally on YouTube because I actually, I again, thank you. Even though we don't really do the YouTube thing, I upload these, just the audio portions to YouTube. I've been throwing up the shorts. But what's funny is, so we recently hit 500 on YouTube. Congrats. And then I literally. post that, bro. Congr- I know, seriously. No, that, no, no, no. But wait, let me tell you. That, no way, it's going to come down. We hit 500. And over the past two or three days, we're now down to 498. So <laughs> That's why I did 1,001 followers. I don't know if um, people unfollowed me or if they were just straight up old accounts that like, you know, not even troll accounts, just, you know, people, whatever, change their accounts or whatever. Right. Like I just thought it was funny. So yeah, now we're back down to 498, which I don't care because again, this was never intended to be a, you know, live show or what a visual show. It's always been the audio thing, but again, we have the YouTube channel so we can go live. So we, you know, people can see our faces, but I I mean, I like the spot. Like I listen to you guys on Spotify and I do think it's actually great if you do the Spotify thing and like the shorts thing, the shorts things on YouTube, actually they're finding is what boosts more of the sub counts. But I mean, like wholeheartedly, like I said, the BC, like congratulations, like some of the people I've met, like you got you and Zach, Mm -hmm. uh, BC, a few others, like great people. And I'll say that here, if we are not live right now, you guys are good people. I appreciate what you do. And like I said, the BC, just keep showing up. Don't worry about nothing else. Just keep showing up. You guys are, are killing it. And I'm really excited for you guys. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate it coming from uh, someone else. And I'll give you that PayPal money for saying that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a sticker so I can put it on the table. Oh, dude, please. I will send you whatever you need, man. Please. Um, so for myself, uh, again, make sure you go follow Greg. Uh, Paperweight Collects on Instagram. Again, he just hit over 1K. There should be way more than that. Again, his weekly stuff with his daughter is absolutely killer. So go check out that as he talks about his weekly pickups. Uh, for myself, again, we have upcoming stuff. So April 13th, uh, Lehigh Valley Comic Con. Again, our buddy Scott Palachek will be there in over in Allentown. So make sure you go check out the Lehigh Valley Comic Convention in Pennsylvania. Uh, we are literally two, God, I don't even know, is it two or three weeks away from King Kong here in New Jersey, April 6th. So one, two, yeah, three weeks away for King Kong. Um, we will have our buddy V Ken Marion there with us, and we will also be dropping an exclusive cover. Um, I cannot really talk about it too much, but it's, it's going to be super limited again. That's all I'm going to say. And then again, man, Terrific Con will be right around the corner as well. We will be there and then anything else in between. So please continue to follow us, continue to share support. Uh, We will have new shirts as well at King Kong and then all the different shows. Oh, yeah. And all the different stuff that's going on. So um, that's it for this week. Zach, hopefully will be back next week. You know, he he said it last week that he's going to be traveling soon and moving here to the East Coast. So that'll be fun because then him and I can kind of get together because i just went to one not wonder con i just went to what the hell is it called awesome con uh this past weekend down in dc and it was like a three-hour drive and he's only like he's gonna be like 30 minutes outside of that so you know what not a bad drive to go down to dc it was it was an okay show and maybe i'll talk about it next week but that's it for this week everybody appreciate it uh and we'll catch you next week later appreciate it later hey comic book collectors do you want to protect what you collect Do you hate when your comic books slide around in your short box or you need to turn them sideways just so they don't bend or fall over? Well, look no further than Sidekick Supplies. Their product fits firmly inside your comic box so you don't need to worry. And not only is their product made in the USA, but also ships free directly to your doorstop. Check out our sponsor, Sidekick Supplies at SidekickSupplies.com and use the code Comic-Con15 for 15% off your purchase. Believe me, you'll be ordering more than one.